everyone and welcome back to our series on the foundational concepts of economics i am samkit bhanti and today we are going to go into the third aspect of uh, the unit 1 that is interdependence and the gains from trade today we will understand how individuals and uh, countries rely on each other and how trade can be beneficial for all the parties involved okay so without any delay let's go into it what are we going to learn after we finish the video so at the end of the video you should be able to understand how everyone can benefit when people trade with each other uh, you should also be able to understand the meaning of absolute advantage and comparative advantage okay and how comparative advantage can explain the gains from trade okay and how to apply the theory of comparative advantage in everyday life and national policy so that's what we are going to learn today by the end of the session right so let's understand how interdependence helps one another so it's very rare to find individuals who can satisfy all their wants on their own okay it the first thing would be to be economically self sufficient and the second is to specialize in the production of one thing and to trade with others okay these are the only two options now with very rare exceptions individuals and uh, nations tend to rely on uh, specialization and with trade okay see we would all probably in the future be economists right we can't do the work of a lawyer or a doctor or any other professional right we will have to take help of other professionals in the future that can be understood as interdependence with one another right the doctor might be requiring their uh, children to understand economics from you and uh, you might be requiring your uh, children's uh, medical advice with a doctor that is an example of interdependence with one another right so interdependence is absolutely intertwined in all of us in whatever we do there has to be interdependence and uh, this is a very good uh, start in order to understand that interdependence and actually specialization is a good thing it makes all of us better off okay that is what we are going to establish in this class today so we have already understood uh, the scarcity and the choices uh, that we have are uh, limited and because of that this interdependence uh, and the uh, you know specialization can actually lead to efficiency okay we have already tackled examples with uh, scarcity and uh, let's go ahead and understand the basic model of interdependence and trade okay so let's go into that right now yeah so let's talk about the definitions of absolute and comparative advantage i don't know ki kitna aapko samajh mein aayega but uh, let me uh, give you the definitions at least and then we'll go into understanding ki ye exactly hota kya hai so absolute advantage uh, refers to the ability of a party to uh, produce more of a good or a service with the same amount of resources than another party okay ye ho gaya absolute advantage agar iska definition main board pe dal deta hu i think this will be a good idea let me put it on the white board to ye hai absolute advantage aur ye hai comparative advantage to comparative advantage however refers to the ability to produce a good or service at a lower opportunity cost than the other okay chalo ab isko ek acche example se samajhte hain that how to uh, really understand ki comparative advantage and absolute advantage hai kya so let's take a good example chalo yahi par example ko likh dete hain so supposing i consider दो कंट्री है कंट्री ए एंड कंट्री बी ठीक है एंड कंट्री ए एंड कंट्री बी कैन प्रोड्यूस फूड एंड शेल्टर ठीक है ओके नाउ लेट कंट्री ए इफ दे गिव ऑल देयर रिसोर्सेज दे आर एबल टू प्रोड्यूस एट फूड एट यूनिट्स ऑफ फूड एंड थर्टी टू यूनिट्स ऑफ शेल्टर okay and country b 
24 units of food by giving everything and 48 units of shelter. Okay. Okay. Now, par, you can easily see that country B, if they give all the resources, they are able to produce more food and more shelter. Can you see that? So if country A is able to produce more food and more shelter, that basically means that country B has an absolute advantage. Okay. Country B has an absolute advantage in both the resources. Okay. Pehla wala resource may be advantage hai, second wala resource may be advantage hai. All right. So, ab iska PPF ko draw karke dekhte hain ki kya PPF is se draw hooga. So, country A ka draw karke dekhte hain. So, please understand what I am drawing is without any trade. If country A and country B do not go into trading, then what happens? Food yahan par hai. Supposing shelter yahan par hai. Okay. So, I will assume a constant rate. So, 8 and this is 32. This is uh, 24 and this is 48. This is country A and this is country B. Okay. Now, assume that, assume that both countries do not go into trade and they are producing at the midpoint. A midpoint kya hai? Midpoint hai ye 16 shelter and 4 food for country A and 24 shelter and 12 food for country B. Ye midpoint hai. Chik hai? So midpoint aagya hai yahan pe 16, yahan par aagya 4, yahan par midpoint aagya 24 aur ye aagya 12. Okay, this is what both of the countries are doing under otter key. So this I call as the point of consumption of A. This is the point of consumption for country B if they do not go into trade. Okay. Now, please understand given everything, country A is able to produce 8 food and 32 shelter. Okay. If I do not want to produce any shelter, I will be able to produce only 8 food. If I do not produce any food, I will be able to produce 32 shelter. So basically price of food divided by price of shelter kya hona chahiye for country A. For country A, food is four times as valuable as shelter. Main agar sare resources ko de dun, to eight unit of food I am able to produce. And if I give everything to shelter, I will be able to produce 32 shelter. So that basically means that food is four times more food is four times more precious than shelter. Okay. So, this means that price of food by price of shelter will be equal to four is to one. Right? Because four times more precious. Hai. Similarly, country B, mein aap kya dekh rahe country B, mein aap ye dekh rahe hai, that if I give everything to food, I am able to produce 24 food. If I give everything to shelter, I am able to produce 48 shelter. Matlab ki shelter is or food is two times more valuable than shelter in country B's perspective. Price of food by price of shelter in country B's perspective will be two is to one. Hai na? I give everything and I am able to produce 24 food. I give everything and I am able to produce 48 shelter standalone, right? So 24 food is equivalent to 48 shelter. 24 food equivalent to 48 shelter basically means that food is two times more valuable than shelter. Agar 100 admi 24 food ko produce kar pa rahe and agar wahi 100 admi 48 shelter ko produce kar pa rahe matlab ki food is two times more valuable than shelter, right? So this is what is already existing without any trade happening. Okay. Now, if I say, if I propose that 
there is a price of the world price of food by price of shelter in the world is 3 is to 1 if i propose price of food by price of shelter is equal to 3 is to 1 both will be happy because um yahan par price of food by price of shelter is 4 is to 1 so there is a lower price in the world okay there is a lower price in the world so country a will demand food from the world or by trading that is but obvious right kyunki price of food by price of shelter in country a is 4 jabki bahar mein bik raha hai for 3 food is 3 is to 1 in the world so obviously country a will want to buy food from the world right demand food from the world or demand food by trading and country b kya bolega country b bolega that country b has 2 is to 1 without any trade and world mein 3 rupees mein bik raha hai food jabki mere country mein uska value hai 2 rupees so i should sell in the world sell food from trade so country a will want to buy that is demand food country b will want to sell food ye samajh mein aa raha hai so if i even talk about one unit एक यूनिट के बारे में भी अगर मैं बात करता हूं एक यूनिट शेल्टर एक यूनिट शेल्टर को इफ आई सेल लाइक फॉर एग्जांपल इफ आई गो इनटू दिस लेट्स ट्राई एंड अंडरस्टैंड कि क्या होगा सो so, let's see let's understand so just to show you ki kya possibility hai supposing country a produces 32 shelter theek hai now it's able to sell 15 shelter and get in return 5 units of food so ultimately consumption point kya hua for country a 32 minus 15, 17 shelter and 5 food. So 17 shelter and 5 food will be somewhere here. ये पांच हो गया और ये 17 हो गया. So this will be the point of consumption. ये 17 है. ये 5 है. So this is the consumption point for A. can you see that i am going outside my ppf main apni ppf ke bahar hu i have gone outside my ppf i hope that this is understandable so specialization ka kya fayda hua specialization ka ye fayda hua that i am able to produce full shelter able to sell a part of it and get some food in return why was this 15 is to 5 because the market price in country a for food was 4 is to 1 and world ke liye 3 is to 1 hai and 2 is to 1 is for country b so country b kya karega country b b ye 3 is to 1 mein khush hoga country b is supposing producing कंट्री बी का प्रोडक्शन पॉइंट है 18 फूड एंड 24 शेल्टर फॉर एग्जांपल ओके क्या पॉसिबिलिटीज है 18 फूड सॉरी 18 फूड एंड शेल्टर विल बी लोअर देन 24 शेल्टर कितना होगा 12, 12 शेल्टर 6 बढ़ाया तो 12 कम करना होगा दिस इज सपोजिंग द प्रोडक्शन पॉइंट फॉर बी ओके ये था प्रोडक्शन पॉइंट फॉर ए बी का प्रोडक्शन पॉइंट इज 18 फूड एंड कैसे लिखते हैं 
एक्स वाई कोऑर्डिनेट है ना तो थर्टी टू कॉमा जीरो थर्टी टू शेल्टर यहाँ पर ट्वेल्व है एंड एटीन है ना ये शेल्टर है ये फूड है ठीक है अब ये ट्रेड जो हुआ है सेल फिफ्टीन शेल्टर एंड गेट फाइव फूड सो सेल फाइव फूड फॉर बी यही तो होगा अगर ए इज बीइंग एबल टू बाय फाइव फूड बी हैज टू सेल फाइव फूड एंड गेट फिफ्टीन शेल्टर इन रिटर्न ठीक है सो अल्टीमेटली क्या हुआ फिफ्टीन शेल्टर मिल गया तो ट्वेंटी सेवन हो गया शेल्टर और एटीन से ये थर्टीन हो गया ट्वेंटी सेवन थर्टीन अब ट्वेल्व ट्वेंटी फोर यहां पर है थर्टीन एंड ट्वेंटी सेवन यहां पर है बी का कंजम्पन पॉइंट भी उसके पीपीएफ से बाहर हो गया बेसिकली क्या हो रहा है पीपीएफ ए एंड बी विदाउट एनी इंटरडिपेंडेंस विदाउट एनी ट्रेड इज दिस वन एंड विथ ट्रेड वी आर बींग एबल टू मूव टू अर पॉइंट तो ये एग्जाम्पल के तौर पे हमने लिया है दैट ए इज सपोजिंग प्रोड्यूसिंग थर्टी टू कॉमा जीरो बी इज प्रोड्यूसिंग ट्वेल्व कॉमा एटीन एंड इफ आउट देर इन द मार्केट ए इज बींग एबल टू सेल फिफ्टीन शेल्टर एंड गेट फाइव फूड एंड बी इज बींग एबल टू सेल द फाइव फूड टू ए एंड गेट फिफ्टीन शेल्टर इन रिटर्न बोथ ऑफ देम विल बी बेटर ऑफ बोथ आर बेटर ऑफ ठीक है सो ट्रेड इज नॉट अ जीरो सम गेम जो हमने देखा था इन द लास्ट क्लास ट्रेड इज नॉट अ जीरो सम गेम इट बेसिकली मेक्स एवरी वन बेटर ऑफ ओके सो लेट्स गो इन टू अंडरस्टैंडिंग एब्सोलूट एडवांटेज अगेन सो एब्सोलूट एडवांटेज एज आई सेड वॉज द अबिलिटी टू प्रोड्यूस अ गुड यूजिंग फ्यूअर इनपुट दैन अदर प्रोड्यूसर कैन ठीक है एंड हियर वी कैन इजिली सी दैट कंट्री ए has an absolute advantage sorry country b has an absolute advantage in the production of both the goods country b has an absolute advantage in the production of both the goods it is being able to produce more food and more shelter in comparison to country a's resources so if i give everything in terms of resources i will be able to produce 24 food and 48 shelter as opposed to only 8 and 32 for country a so country b has an absolute advantage in both the goods and why did trade benefit because of different opportunity costs okay so as we already know opportunity cost is whatever that must be given up to obtain some other item so the opportunity cost is different the opportunity cost of food is four shelter in country a and the opportunity cost of food is two shelter in country b because of the difference in opportunity costs there is benefits to be had by trading okay so we have seen the detailed example of country a and country b where absolute ad advantage is there for country b in both the goods and yet in a trade because of the difference in opportunity costs country a and country b both can benefit when they go into trade okay so that is what uh, specialization leads to in fact uh, what is exactly happening if i were to draw it on the whiteboard once more ye country a ke liye main draw karta hu ये थर्टी टू है दिस इज एट ओके नाउ आउट देयर इन द मार्केट इफ द इफ द अपॉर्चुनिटी कॉस्ट इज बेसिकली थ्री इज टू वन एंड इफ आई स्पेशलाइज इन द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ शेल्टर वॉट हैपन्स इज द फॉलोइंग इफ आई वर टू स्पेशलाइज एंड प्रोड्यूस ओनली शेल्टर थर्टी टू शेल्टर i can literally sell all the 32 out there in the market if possible and get 32 by 3 amount of food that's much more than 8 so by going into trade i have literally enhanced my ppf enhanced my production possibility frontier my earlier uh, ppf is the brown line but when i go into trade 
with a three is to one kind of uh, with a three is to one kind of a um, opportunity cost for food in terms of a shelter, I have enhanced my PPF. And similarly, the same thing goes for country B as well. That is what specialization does to you. For country B, it's the following. Right. So B ka kuch diagram aisa banega. Zero hai. Shelter, food, 24, 48. Now, if country B completely specializes in the production of food, it is able to sell 24 food out there in the world. And in return can get a maximum of 72 shelter, you know, because 24 into 3, 72. Remember world may food ka value is 3 is to 1. Okay. So basically this was the PPF under self-sufficiency. This is the PPF under trade. So this is the enhanced PPF under trade. So can you see that both A and B can basically go on updated quantities? Uske quantities update ho gaya hai. Upgrade ho gaya hai. Possibilities of uh, consumption have enhanced. Like for example, for A, this shaded area are bundles which were earlier not possible, but now it is possible. Similarly, for country B, this area of bundles were earlier not possible. Now it is possible. Right? So, trade is a good thing. So, yeah. So, we have understood how PPFs change under trade. And uh, what is the meaning of absolute advantage? Absolute advantage is, is uh, when a country has an advantage in the production of that good, absolutely. And uh, comparative basically means that if there is a difference in opportunity costs, trade will be beneficial. Specialization will be beneficial. Okay. We have already shown it visually to you as well. Now let's take a look at a few real world examples of uh, trade and how, uh, you know, countries have actually benefited from trade. US and uh, China, high tech goods and manufacturing that uh, China has actually provided not only to the US, but uh, to the world in terms of, uh, you know, technology has been a boon to most of the countries. India and uh, Japan, textiles goes from India, machinery comes from Japan. So these are actually real world examples in order to understand what is the comparative and absolute advantage. It's not only that, it's um, the idea of comparative and absolute advantage has been postulated way back in the 1700s and the 1800s. In Adam uh, Smith's book in 1776, An Inquiry into the Nature and the Causes of the Wealth of Nations, he writes and he postulates the theory of absolute advantage there. Okay, he writes about the ability of the producers to benefit through a specialization and trade. Right. And David Ricardo in 1817, in his book, Principles of Political Economy and Taxation, Ricardo has actually put across the theory of comparative advantage and argues that against uh, restrictions, there should be free trade allowed between countries. Okay. Even though uh, there is absolute advantage, there is um, free trade benefits that are to be had uh, between two countries where the opportunity costs are different. So the benefits of uh, free trade are an issue that is uh, generally agreed upon by most economists and the theories and arguments uh, developed by these two uh, great individuals, Adam Smith and uh, David Ricardo more than 200 years ago are still used today. Okay. So closing the session, thank you so much for being a part of the session. And I hope that each of you have understood the concept of absolute and comparative advantage. Today, basically, we explored the concept of interdependence and the gains from a trade. We discussed how individuals and nations benefit from trade the principles of absolute and comparative advantage as a result and the impact of trade policies. Okay. Thank you for joining me in this exploration. 
and i hope that each of you have been able to understand the concepts stay tuned for the next part of the course where we shall be uh, diving very deep into the functioning of markets so till we meet next see you next time all the best bye bye